read to you today the um, biography of Archimedes. This is a shortened version just for kids, young kids. Once upon a time, long, long, long ago, in Syracuse, Greece, lived a very intelligent man named Archimedes. Archimedes loved to think and solve challenging problems. When Archimedes was still young, the king of Syracuse, King Heron, asked for his help. King Heron had built an impressive ship so big he couldn't move it into the water. The king knew Archimedes loved brain teasers, so he thought this smart man could find him a solution. Archimedes went to work, and with the help of some young boys who worked for him, he placed a collection of pulleys, levers, and ropes around the base of the ship. Then he sat in a low chair on the beach. Large crowds waited to see if he would succeed. At the signal from the king, he gently tugged on the rope attached to the first pulley. Smoothly and almost effortlessly, the ship began to move towards the sea. Everyone cheered, and some scratched their heads in bewilderment, wondering how he did it. Some time after, King Heron said, Archimedes, I have another problem for you. Yes, Your Majesty, how can I help you? I have had a new crown crafted by the Omphanus. It's here, wrapped in this velvet cloth. It's magnificent, Your Highness. Aren't you happy with it? I'm pleased with the way it looks, but something tells me it's not quite what I ordered, the king explained. You see, I took the required amount of gold to the Antinus and asked, and asked him to craft this crown. You see, I took the required amount of gold to the Antonis and asked him to craft this crown. But now I wonder if the goldsmith used silver to put inside the crown and kept some of the gold for himself. Hmm, Archimedes was stumped. Naturally, you wouldn't want to cut into such a beautiful crown. I suppose you've checked it to see that it weighed the same as the gold you gave the Antonis? Yes, said the king, I did, and it weighs the same. Archimedes left, promising the king he would find out if the crown was pure gold or if it was mixed with silver. While Archimedes was bathing in the public bathhouse, there were no private bathrooms back then, he suddenly jumped up shouting, Eureka! Eureka! I found it, I found it, running down the streets with his rear end completely naked. In the bath, he noticed the water level rose and fell as he lowered and lifted himself, and that the water buoyed him up more when his body was completely submerged. Archimedes knew the crown weighed the same as the gold the king gave the goldsmith. But if the crown displays more water than the gold, that meant its volume must be greater. So it must be filled with something less dense than gold, like silver. Indeed, that's exactly what happened. Archimedes had solved the king's puzzle without cutting the crown open. Later, when the Romans wanted to conquer Syracuse, Archimedes defended it. Archimedes built huge catapults that threw heavy stones over the city walls onto Roman ships. He designed massive cranes that picked up ships and dumped all the sailors into the sea. He used large burning glasses, like gigantic magnifying glasses, which focused light onto the ships until they got so hot 
they burst into flames. For three years, the Romans couldn't defeat Archimedes' ingenious defense. The Roman commander Marcellus was angry at being defeated by a mathematician. However, he understood and respected his brilliance and creativity. Today, Archimedes is considered among the greatest three mathematicians who ever lived. Thank you for listening to the biography of Archimedes for Kids. The source for this um, summary of this biography came from Mathematicians Are People Too. There are two volumes and Archimedes' biography is featured in the first volume. Thank you. If you want to learn more, please visit my website at raisingaselfreliantchild.com.